Thank you for joining us this afternoon for the 3-6 Literacy Curriculum Approval Process Phase 1 application. I am Kathy Mishuli, the Literacy Program Manager here at the Arkansas Division of Elementary and Secondary Education. I am going to walk through the application to clarify the process. I will not be taking questions during this session, but will have an email address that you can send your questions to at the end of the webinar. Section 1 contains information and the ra rationale for the creation of the approved programs list. The Right to Read Act, which was amended by the Arkansas Legislature in 2019, requires curriculum programs that are supported by the science of reading and based on instruction that is explicit, systematic, cumulative, and diagnostic. As a result of this law, the Arkansas Division of Elementary and Secondary Education shall identify and create a list of approved materials, resources, and curriculum programs for public school districts and open enrollment charter public charter schools. So this section is all about kind of the background of the legislation of this endeavor. So this request, we are, submit, we are putting out a request for submission of core and supplemental materials, resources, and curriculum programs for 3-6 Literacy Tiers 1 and 2 instruction. Um, a separate review of other grade levels and dyslexia will be requested in an additional process. eligibility process, this is an overview. There are going to be two phases to this review process. Phase one, which is this call of submissions, is a preliminary review of 3-6 literacy programs submitted by curriculum program providers through this application process. Separate applications are required for each program type. Providers must meet all eligibility in phase one in order to advance to phase two. Phase two will be the full review of instructional programs. The vendor will have to establish that the 3-6 literacy program submitted meets required eligibility criteria. Now, upon acceptance of phase one eligibility, providers will be notified and receive instructions to submit materials for Phase 2 program review. It is important to note that Phase 2 of the submission process will require vendors to explicitly mark and label the location of required components within submission materials. If you would like to see what Phase 2 entails, the K2 Phase 2 application is posted on our web page. A couple of important notes. Completion of requirements for Phase 1 eligibility does not guarantee final approval. Vendors meeting Phase 1 eligibility must still complete and submit the Phase 2 program review to be approved before inclusion on the division's 2020-2021 um, year approved list. We have a disqualifier. If the theoretical basis of any submitted program utilizes the three queuing systems model of reading or visual memory as the primary basis for teaching word recognition, it will be disqualified because cognitive science refutes their use in foundational reading. If you want to get into the research, here are the citations. This is not an exhaustive list of the research. So, uh, section 2 submission guidelines. The preliminary review of the 3-6 literacy program must include a complete program 
provider profile. Um, here is just an example of the cover page. If you would like to go to the back of your application and pull out the program provider profile at this time, it might be easier to follow along in the next few slides as we go through because this is where the application you'll submit starts. Now the submission. Phase 1 Literacy Program Curriculum Applications must be submitted electronically as one PDF document which includes the program provider profile and any ancillary documents from the program provider. Do not include hyperlinks. If you have critical information that is linked, it will not be reviewed. The file name must have the following format, 36, publisher, program name, 2020, per. You will send all electronic and hard copies to Dr. Brooke Butler at the given um, email address and then you have the physical address where those hard copies will be mailed to. And please note that the due date for the program profile, provider profile application, ancillary and ancillary documents must be submitted electronically and postmarked by January 10th, 2020. Now, here's where the application begins. Phase 1 is the intent. This section will include a brief description of your program and its target audience. So, in Part A, you have a brief description of the core components of your program. Section B the target audience, you're going to identify by check marking the boxes for third, fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, or all. And then section C is you describe how you address each group of learners identified individually. And you will notice that you have um, a box for third, one for fourth, one for fifth, and for sixth. That's so in that description you're telling specifically how my program would address the learning needs for third graders, how it addresses it for fourth graders, and so on. Required elements. Grounded in the science of reading and evidence-based. In this section, you will have a, valid a validity statement and a research narrative. The validity statement is the program provider summary of findings of multiple research studies, and these studies must be based in the science of reading. In other words, it's a summary of research that your program design was built on and is based on the science of reading. Your research narrative is um, a description of how research was utilized to determine content, instructional strategies and assessments, and the degree of correlation between the program content, instructional strategies, and program assessments, and the research findings. So this is how the research worked and outcomes by using your program. Now, explicit, you provide a clear explanation of the core program components, the explicit instruction that involves the direct explanation in which the concepts are explained and skills are modeled without vagueness or ambiguity. Your instruction is concise, specific, and related to the objective with scaffolding and guided practice. Systematic and cumulative, 
This is where you provide a detailed scope and sequence, which includes spiraling review. Your systematic instruction is a carefully planned sequence of instruction that is thought out and designed before activities and lessons are planned, maximizing the likelihood that whenever students are asked to learn something new, they already possess the appropriate prior knowledge and understanding to see its value and to learn it effectively. And then diagnostic is where you provide a list of program assessments including how and when they are used. Then alignment to the Arkansas Academic Standards, providing that alignment or correlation to those standards. In Section 3, this is your agreement of completion. It's continuation to Phase 2, Literacy Curriculum Approval Process is contingent upon the fulfillment of conditions required in your Phase 1 eligibility. If submission of Phase 1 program eligibility does not meet the requirements, the program will not advance to Phase 2. Okay, here is the agreement of completion. And in order to be considered for review, this whole program um, provider profile must be completed. And this last page is kind of like your checklist to make sure that you have all the required pieces. And the last part of that is making sure that you sign it and date it. Okay, now let's move to the rubric um, that those applications will be scored by. Here you can see that, that your cover page is where the scoring begins, and that's simply just making sure that you have all the, that information recorded on the cover page, and it will be scored as complete or not complete. Um, a brief description of the product describes your core components, and again, um, that will be a complete or not complete. Your tar target audience was identified, complete or not complete. And then your audience description, which is dependent on what what target audience you identified in section in 1B. Did you describe how you specifically address the specific needs of the grade level or grade levels that you identified? And then the next section required elements that this is where um, you have your, your research and please notice for the validity statement and the research narrative and citations, this, in this section you are scored complete, partially complete, or not complete. If you receive a complete or partially complete, it can still move, you still could move on to phase two. Um, a partially complete, a person would get a partially complete score when, for example, in your research, you might have research that is in progress and not complete, or you have a study that is scheduled to begin soon, and obviously it is not complete. So that would earn you a partially complete score. Explicit is where you're identifying the core components, you're describing those components, and you provide those examples of explicit instruction. And the systematic and cumulative, where your detailed scope and sequence is, your evidence of spiraling review, and then that sequence of instruction that shows that um, previous learning activities were designed to enhance your readiness, the, the students in readiness to engage in new learning.
And then diagnostic the list of your assessments, of your program assessments, with a description of how and when they are to be used, and then alignment to the Arkansas academic standards. And then finally, that um, signature that you did sign it, it has been dated, and that you have submitted the PDF, one single PDF document that's labeled and identifies the questions it supports, and that that copy that you have, the hard copy that you have mailed to Dr. Brooke Butler is bound either, for example, in a three ring binder or by a plastic comb system. Um, those have been attended to properly. And then at the bottom, you will see that there's a place for the reviewers to mark that phase one application complete meaning it would move to phase two or incomplete and it will not move to phase two. Either way there will be an explanation of the rating that that application received. Um, this is a picture of our web page where you can find all the information about the review process. So anytime you have a question and would like to look back, that's where you'll find all the documents. And there is a literacy curriculum approval process notification link. If a deadline is going to be extended or some kind of really pertinent update is going to take place, it will be posted under this link. So you might want to check that periodically. And there is the um, web the address to get to our web page at the bottom of the slide. And this is just the bottom half of that page to show you that the 3-6 application that is needed for this submission is already posted on the web page. Okay, if you have any questions, here is the um, email address that you can send those questions to. Please send us your questions because we, we do want to um, answer them for you to make sure that you have all the information you need for your submission. Here is um, contact information for myself um, and my email address and then Dr. Tiffany Pride, who is our Director of Curriculum and, and Assessment, and her email address as well. Um, this webinar has been recorded and it will post to the website soon. Uh, during the next two weeks, there will be a limited number of staff here, so questions answered may take a little longer, so please be patient with us. You will get an answer. Thank you so much for your time today.